Hey, what's up, Tom? Uh, yeah, it is. I'll show that off here in just a second. That it is, that it is. <clears throat> How's audio? I'm not done setting everything up yet. Actually still sending out a couple of updates to everyone. Yeah, so we've got, uh, what's up, Wix Blue? How's it going, my dude? We've got some uh, tuning to do today. Ultimately, we're going to be uh, working on the bottom side of this plate once we get it desoldered. I think we're going to do the desolder today. That's my plan. And then probably early this week, we'll do the, uh, the actual file. Because I don't have a good file, actually on site here. I'm going to need to order one. So yeah, the uh, to catch you all up. Where is it? Let's do this here. Hopefully that's not too loud. Let me put some Audio on here? Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, so it sounds really good. Um, the, the only problem is, and this is unique to just exactly what had happened here um, with this single build. So this plate is... Uh, is uh actually it's it's not compatible with zeal screw and stabilizers so if you take a look here you can see how close that edge is there on the top so when i pull up here on the when i pull up here the wire is actually hitting the top part of the plate and so what we're going to need to do is desolder this whole thing to uh to basically just take the stabilizer out and file underneath the plate a little bit so that it has more mobility um, yeah, so I, I noticed, uh, I noticed it after it was built, yeah, that, uh, that, that, that clearance is just not there. Um, so I don't know if that's unique as well to GMK screw-in stabilizers. They might sit a little bit lower than the Zeal stabilizer wire. Um, that could be the case. But, uh, you know, and so alternatively, the other thing I looked to do is see if there was enough clearance in between here, which there's really just not. I look to see if about, you know, maybe just unscrewing that one screw and trying to shimmy the wire out with only having to desolder just this one switch here. And just, you know, unscrew that, unscrew that, and then just slip the stabilizer up and out through the top since you have that line here and this line here. I was hoping that maybe I would be able to do that, but there's just, there's no clearance. Yeah, no clearance. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, there's no, there's no chance. No chance of being able to fit that out. So, I spoke to the client over the weekend and, uh, yeah, we're comfortable with just desoldering it, he said. And so, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with that here today. We'll get a quick desolder on. Yeah, it's a problem though. I mean, percent really should have paid attention to that. You know, it should definitely have, it should definitely have cutouts that are large enough for, you know, no matter what you would need. Um, but yeah, so I built this thing up and it does, it sounds really nice. The stabilizers are tuned, you know, well, it sounds good. The only problem is of course, just you have a range of motion on the space bar. So, um, no, so you know what I did actually, the, the screw that shorted out, what Wix is talking about here, the screw and stabilizer for the enter key here, it's actually, let me see if I can get a close-up for you guys. If you can see that, it's literally on top of a pad. 
And so that screw, once you screw it all the way in, it shorts out the circuit on the, uh, on the PCB and makes it so that none of your switches work properly. So I think that's focused there. Yeah, so not good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an oversight as well. Um, oh, hold on one second, guys. I have to take this phone call real quick. Hello. Yes, you did. Uh, <laughs> are you, do you, when you're back, you want to let me know and I'll run it out to you? Okay, sounds good. Bye bye. Okay. Alright, so that pretty much catches us up to what we're doing today, though. We've got the soldering iron warmed up. <laughs> We should be good to go. We'll get this thing desoldered here today. Um, yeah, so real quick before I jump into that, um, we can we can talk about this piece for a second. Um, so this came in uh, on Saturday. And so, yeah, this is the first uh, appearance of it on streams. You can see it's kind of got that crazy, I don't know if you can see the 910 logo on the top. That's pretty nuts. Yeah, that's awful in terms of in terms of zooming here. What I'm trying to do. Can you see the color change on it? <laughs> yeah. So I did not. I did not do this on. I did not put the RGBs on my 910 CE. I had the option to. I have the kit actually and everything for it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't just because in order to get that SMD to light up, you need to solder in every other SMD on the rear of the board. So yeah, it, it does. It looks really solid. Um, it's actually just a, uh, it's an acrylic cutout that goes into the 910 spot instead of the normal brass cutout that goes in there. Um, and then yeah, the, uh, the case just looks incredible. I mean, yeah, look at that. That pink is just so good. I mean, I don't know how well that's showing up on stream or not. I'm sure I'm getting a little bit of glare. But this is the, that's the big part there. With the little Mimi engrave there. <laughs> So yeah, this one's fun. Um, and you know, so I got this board. It, it was actually built when I got it. Um, the so the 910 is actually built with what I thought was ergo or not ergo because they're very heavy. They were actually built with uh, what I thought was tactile MX grays. Um, uh, okay, so Wix, I haven't I haven't weighed it, but so this thing shipped and the weight on the shipping label was almost seven pounds and all it was was this plus another plate and PCB um, and so yeah, so most of that seven pounds was all this boy, of course um, So it's heavy dressed up. I'm sure even heavier. Um, so yeah, listen to this though um, You know watch your ears here. I got about one Huey away from the mic Can you hear that scratch? So the stabilizers, stabilizers sound pretty good. Scratchy though, and it's the switch. It's not the, the stabilizers are tuned up well and, and, and great, but the, but right, yeah, it doesn't sound like it. So this is actually lubed. Um, and, it's it's lightly lubed. Here's here's what it is. So Jokerick built this Hanshin. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but the guy's an incredible builder and you know, so it would be very rare for him to build something without having a switch fully tuned. Um, so when I got this and felt it, you know, it, it instantly I was like, oh this is this is heinous. And and so I actually messaged 
Sam about it, the guy who made this Suxi. I messaged him about it and he said, so anytime, oh, I'm sorry, hold on one second. I'll continue this story in two seconds. This is the, I need to run a bag out real quick to my wife. Hey, you here? Okay, I'll be right up. I'll be right back. All right. <clears throat> okay, so anytime I have a conversation, where was I? So yeah, anytime I have a conversation with Yuxi, it's basically in like, you know, one DM increments, and then I don't see him for another couple of days. And so his message back to me was, was, oh yeah, I remember that. That's a beautiful board. How about them gray linears though? And that was it. And I like, I hadn't, I, he like, he was gone. And so I was like, great linears. And so I think what Jukrik built this thing with is, you know how the old vintage blackboards would come with a single MX gray switch on the space bar? I'm pretty sure he built this entire board. So each and every single one of these switches is from a, is from a, uh, is from a vintage PCB. So this board cost 65 vintage PCBs in order to build. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with these switches yet. Um, yeah, like I said, they're, they're heavy. They're probably about, probably about 85 grams in weight. And they almost, they almost felt tactile to me when I first started typing with them. Like they felt like a, they felt like an MX clear. But yeah, no, it's it's a meme board to like the next level. I mean, truly to the next level. So I mean, I, I have not yet confirmed. I reached out to Hanshin and he he messages back very infrequently on Discord and anywhere else. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what I think he did. I think this is actually 65 separate MX gray space bars from PCBs on a vintage black. So anyways, kind of a funny board. Kind of a funny board with a funny story behind it. So I was happy to pick that one up though. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's that's also why I'm selling my CLS and my 910 CE. Because yeah, I've not been, the CLS right now is in the case. I haven't used that in a while. And the, uh, the 910 CE, obviously, I mean, this is the same form factor. I don't need two 910s. So anyways, Let's get into it. We're going to be desoldering this entire board today, and then once I get my file in, I'm going to be taking a file to the underside of this plate, and uh, and yeah, we'll go from there. Actually, you know what? I need to send one more message out before I uh, get into it here. Um, yeah, I don't need two 910s. Uh, so right now I've got another plate that's actually already built up uh, with... Uh, vintage blacks um, of a lighter weight. I I type with very light weights, um, and so my plan is to either use that, or you know what I would actually do is I would put the SMDs on it so that I got the same effect with whatever plate I ended up using. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I, I might retune this. Um, you know, Sam, one of the other messages Sam put in the same thing was that Lube has difficulty maintaining its connection to the stem. I have no idea. I mean, obviously, I've never really worked with these MX gray linears. It's typically just byproduct of getting a PCB. I've, I've desoldered a couple of vintage PCBs that to get MX blacks off of them, but I've never done anything with the, the, the MX gray that comes on it. Um, and so... Yeah, yeah, here's here. Meanwhile, here's a board built with entirely of them. Um, so I haven't decided yet. 
If that's what it is, it's kind of something special, and I probably won't even touch this PCB. Because I'm sure Jukrik, I'm sure he spring swapped these with just something nice but heavier than what I'm used to. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do a typing test for you guys with this one here in a minute. Because, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a scratchy sound. It's definitely a scratchy sound. Let's not cue up a song that sounds like we're about to destroy this client's board. Let's go with something a little more chill. Okay, here we go. A more than heated up on this thing. I'm just gonna tin it real quick. And I'm also gonna move this back so I don't get any flux or anything anywhere. Turn this on, rip your ears. <laughs> Full board of Alps locking switches. That would be some next level shit right there. Isn't a single one like. Isn't a single locking switch like 10 bucks? Like on average, if you were to buy. You know, because I see them all the time posted, and typically you're only looking for one. So it's like, you know, somebody buys it for, a, you know, 10 bucks plus shipping or whatever. You know, nothing in that instance. It's just another little add-on for your Alps board, but... <laughs> that would be taking, uh... That'd be taking sticky keys to the next level, you know? <laughs> that would really be taking sticky keys to the next level. Alright. It's always the first key. First key, uh, or the first switch always wants to be difficult.
So who was it that we were talking about? Wix, were you in chat the other evening when we were talking about a guy who had 11 canoes? Yeah, so, you know what made me laugh? So, wonder if, <laughs> wonder if Old Cat bought a bunch and then just filed a ton of pieces of plates. Was like, encountered, encountered the stabilizer issue. Was like, I was like, oh, I guess that is what it is. I guess I'll just get 10 more of them and go through the same annoying process for every single one. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he flipped any of them or if he's just got a wall of a wall of canoes. So what do you mean you hold it more horizontally? What secret what secret stance am I missing out on? I might try I'm open to trying different uh, different methods. Because my arm gets tired after holding it like that. Oh, hold the PC up. No, oh, yeah, no, so what I was saying is, I think, so when we were talking about that in chat, I then taught, I was then thinking to myself about well, the process of what I've had to go through with this plate and PCB. And so... And so I'm thinking to myself, man, I wonder if Old Cat bought one, ran into this issue with the Zeal stabilizers, and said, "Fuck it, I guess this is just the inferior product I'll have to deal with. I'm gonna still go out and buy ten more." That's dedication, there. So if I hold it vertically, if I hold the PCB up vertically. Which I could do, I would do a, I would be kind of doing away with the purpose of having my smoke absorber there, though. So it's not that bad. We'll be fine. Yeah, no, that's true. Then I can just kind of hold it like this. I got gotcha. you. It's a heavy boy. So one of the last boards that I was desoldering. Uh, was was one of those boards that's not really meant to be desoldered. I had leadless solder that I was working my way through, and then on top of that, I was working with Otemu Blue switches, the ones with the SIP sockets. And so the nozzle on my desoldering vacuum. The tolerance between the, the tip of the, or each one of the stems on the switch and the hole within my vacuum, it was uh, very tight. It was very tight. So not only am I dealing with like a shitty solder, but not getting anywhere with it either. Yeah, no, fuck gravity. Definitely don't believe in that. <laughs> yeah. He would have just needed to commission his own plate at that point. <laughs> uh. Yeah, well, I'll let you know. We'll see if uh we'll see what we get with this bad boy here once uh once we finish desoldering. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not buying a uh client a new uh PCB. That might be, uh, might be what happens at the end of the day. We'll find out. So, what were they at the group buy price? Are they kind of, are they down to group buy pricing? I feel like they might have been expensive at group buy price too, right? Let's take that temperature down a little bit. Uh. 
Yeah. No, they did. They flipped for about... I mean, I think Heine flipped his for seven, seven hundred, maybe more. Was it Heine? I think Heine had one that flipped for a pretty good amount. Sold it at a good time. That's hot, that's hot, it's very hot. So when is the queue coming in? Speaking of Quantrick, my body is ready. Yeah, no, we're doing, uh, we're doing, we're vacuuming, baby. Is that what you mean? We're not fluxing. Uh, no, what was it called? Hachi. Hachi. I think CH. Although, I don't know. Twitch chat genius, thank you very much for following. I appreciate you, dude. Enjoy your stay. Yeah, what was it? Hachi, right? I wanted one of the Sakuras. Hachi, yeah, with H-A-C-H-I. Are they all numbers? Isn't that what that is? I don't know my, I don't know my Japanese. Q is, Q is eight, right? Or is it, I can't remember. Is he working his way down numbers? Oh, Quantric 1800. Who's getting the uh, HBCP? right now. Yeah, I'm at like you know, a little bit more. Yeah, I'm at like 650, I think. Uh. 
pads are looking pretty clean as they come up. Are you left-handed, Wix? Oh yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. There's some stuff there, but it's it's chill. It's percolating right there on the end. Let's see if I can move that off. You get like a little ridge residual like right up to the sides on it, I've noticed. Oh yeah, that wouldn't be good. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't want it to start falling back out. No, so I've got it, I'm getting it. I've got a nice little chunk in the, in the gun right now. But yeah, that thing's, that baby's not gonna be making its way back through, so. We're Gucci. We're two rows down, two more to, or three more to go. What a deal. There we go. All the pads are coming up clean. And they look good. There's like only like two that look like there have been like one or two pads that look like they've gotten a little discolored that looks just like flux, but we're going with flux. Haha, <laughs> that's a lot. That's asking a lot. Sociopathic, do you do uh, do you do a vintage uh, vintage black sale? Are you desoldering a bunch of them constantly? Or do you just do them for yourself? Oh, what's up, my dude? How's it going? Max, right? Another Max in the house. Yeah, you know, I, you know, after, after uh, getting used to having my mouse so close to my keyboard on the right, I, as you can see, I put my numpad on the left, too. Um, yeah, Max, I'm sorry, dude. There can only be one. We're going to have to enter the Thunderdome here. Two Maxes enter, one Max leaves. You guys ever use flux wick? Uh, no, this is the Triss. With the crazy, uh, well, I'm sure you guys can't see that. With the crazy sandblasted weight. Yeah, I can't remember where I was saying. My, uh, my TGR quiver has gotten strong these past couple of days. So I've got, right now, until it sells, I've got two 910s, I've got the Triss, I've got an Alice, I've got a Jane on the way, so I think the only thing I'm missing is the V1 Jane right now. Yeah. Yeah, the Flux, the Flux Wick I've actually heard is pretty good. Like, if you need to do, you need to do precision work, I guess. Oh, yeah, I want to get the Unicorn. God, I wanted to get the Unicorn. Like, I, I had the opportunity, you know, obviously I, I caught it while the buy was still active, but I just didn't have the money. I couldn't justify picking up the 910 SE and then the next day spending another 400 bucks on the Unicorn. 
but yeah, I'm very eager to try it. Um, I don't know if you guys know who uh, Dalman is uh, over in the over in the local to the DC uh, metropolitan area, but he's got a unicorn on the way. He's also got. I'm gonna have correct. I don't think he's in here right now. I think uh, I think he's also got a. Uh, I think he's also got a 356 mini. So it'll be really cool being able to, to test those out side by side. Oh no no no! You know what he has? He has a goose kit. He has the he has the zero zero. Um. Yeah yeah I know I know Michael. Yep. Um. I don't know if he's gonna be in the DC area for too much longer, but uh, but yeah he's a good lad. Um. Yeah, Alice is awesome. Alice is. Uh, I think Alice is my favorite board right now. I have Alice right over here to uh, exit exit cam. Right. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, no big space bar. It sounds awesome. I mean, there's a space. I don't know if you guys can hear that. That's a space bar on my Alice. There's the shift and there's the enter. It just sounds. It sounds so good. Have you met? Uh, have you met Navs? Or you just know of them? Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I'll show you. Hold on, let's take a break for a second. Let me clean my tip real quick. Put that down. Things look okay. There we go. So my Alice is silver on top and gray on the bottom. There's the there's the seam, and then there's the bottom. So yeah, it's incredible. This is my this is probably my favorite board right now. Um, no, well. It was my favorite board until I got this guy. And in terms of built board, this is my favorite board. Uh, this I still need to figure out what I'm doing with these terribly meme switches. Um, but yeah, here's the... And that's of course, I mean, I'm holding it right now. So typing, it sounds so much deeper. Um, mine is built up with tangerines. Uh, I have 30, or no, I have 62 gram uh, Cat Weiwei springs in it, uh, lubed with 205G0. Uh, let's see here, I need to catch up the chat, let's see here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can agree with that. MX Islands don't sound too good in Spacebar. Um, you know, I, uh, I put I put erg I actually put tactile grays on my spacebar a lot. That sounds pretty damn good, if you ask me, depending upon the build. Okay, yeah, no, that's awesome, Max. Yeah, he's uh, he's a great guy. Um, he pretty much uh, he pretty much emptied out his entire stock, and so yeah. So if you got some stuff from him, that's cool. He's uh, he's had a great collection. And ooh, I'm just looking now. That is a beautiful Alice. Is that demonic? What are those double legends? That is incredible looking. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Let's go up on stream for a second. That looks incredible. Let's see here. What in the world is this? You're gonna have to give me some details on this one, dude. Oh, where'd it go? Boom. Look at that. What in the world are those sub legends? Ooh. That looks so good. Yeah, so that's Korean. Hold on, what is that? Leopold double shot PBT and demonic for compatibility. So what's the quality like on the uh, Leopold keycaps? Are those double shots?
That's awesome. Yeah, you're gonna have to tell me, Wix, what uh, what the quality of those uh, Leopold keycaps are, but they look really good. I mean, regardless of quality and feel, for us, for the aesthetic, they look awesome. I use very light springs, uh, Max. Very very light. Um, I've been using uh, I've been using like 60 and 62 gram lately. My I've got some uh, I've got some 68 gram vintage blacks. Um, actually, in fact, uh, the ones that you gave me um, the the wise vintage blacks, which are some of my nicest, I build up with 65 gram. Or 65. I 68. I built them up with 68 gram. I'm reading chat and, and talking at the same time. Yeah, try 55. Super light 55 gram. Oh yeah, baby. Um, so what was funny? So Wix, I'm gonna use you as an example. 65 gram is like you know uh, what a lot of people go to is like you know that's the default. That's like the perfect weighting, right? So Elaine's first round of Cat Weiwei Springs, the 65 gram spring actually was closer in weight to like a 55 to a 58 gram. And people loved it. Like across the board, people were like, this is incredible. It's one of the best feeling springs ever. And it was actually a lot lighter than, you know, what you would be using if you had a true 65 gram spring. So yeah, I would agree with you, Max. 68 gram is a little bit heavy. Um, I've gotten used to it. I actually, where's the other? I moved it because I had too much going on on my desk. Um, my, uh, here you go, my 68 gram is here. So I've been swapping, I've been swapping this around because because uh, it actually fits into the SE case as well. But yeah, here's the here's the 68 gram uh, PCB. Sounds really good. So here's 68 gram vintage blacks. These are the ones that Max gave me. Um, yeah, dude, that's awesome that you're in chat right now. So I gotta say, here you go. Let's turn this off. Sound good, and then that's an that's an Ergo Gray. Uh, that's a uh, gray MX Gray tactile on the spacebar. But they sound they sound fantastic. I mean, and this is this is a naked PCB with no with no case, and so obviously going to sound obviously going to sound so much better when it's actually built up in a case. All right, I've been taking my time. This has been a uh, this has been an Anthony zero zero level of procrastination desolder. I feel like whenever I tune into that guy's stream, he's like talking ninety percent of the time and working like ten. Yeah, I can understand that, Max. So. I actually, um, I actually have a batch. I did a small group buy for West German vintage blacks. And so I am excited. I've got those coming in here soon. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude, I love Anthony's stream. That dude's great. He's always building some cool uh. stuff. Very cool lad. Um, yeah, so West German vintage blacks. I've got Woden. I got Woden stock coming in. Yeah, with that on that note, Wix. I guess I need to get back to work, right? <coughs> Typically, when I'm building, I try and keep it going pretty consistently because I don't. At least I haven't started a stopwatch for builds. <coughs> And especially when I'm doing a client's build, I want to keep track of the time I put towards it since I'm charging hourly. This I'm obviously doing free of charge. If the guy wants to tip me a six pack of beer or something, great. But I'm not expecting anything for doing all this work. This is something I should have caught when I actually built it around the first time. Without, disolder without soldering it, I should have caught this. So, hopefully this story... Uh, Hopefully this story has a happy ending to it. Hopefully I'm able to desolder this thing, get this space bar tuned up again properly, and uh, and rebuild this and uh, and not have any issues with the PCB. 
Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, you guys will have to, uh, you guys will have to get in for the next buy. I, uh, I did not, I did not take, like, so I, I had the idea to run this thing. Um, I reached out to Woden, who I had heard, uh, typically does not deal with people from the States. And, uh, and he asked, you know, what I was trying to get. And I pretty much said, I'll take, I'll take all the stock of vintage blacks you have. And, uh, and, and so I think he's, it's not even here yet. He's got a DHL box coming to me. That's, um, that's about, I think shipping started at five kilograms. So I think I have, I think I have seven to eight kilograms worth of PCBs coming to me. Um, and of which, of which I think it's like, a through D date code, and then E through G date code, uh, G80 vintage blacks. So they should really, I mean, they're not like Nixies, you know, uh, but, but they should be really, really good. Um, the, the A through D, so to talk about price, the A through D date code cost me uh, 65 euros, and the E through G date code cost me 50 euros, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I'm pretty much selling them at price. I did a private group buy for this, very small, and, uh, and, and the guys that helped me out, it was basically just because, one, I wanted to try Woden stock, and uh, you know I, I wanted to make it worthwhile for Woden, and so I, I pretty much covered a large invoice for him, and I just took, uh, took invoices from, uh, from the people who were willing to, to go in on this buy with me. Uh, so I'm pretty much, when you, when you look at labor, uh, the prices I'm turning around and selling them for, I'm selling them for about a dollar a switch for the A through D day code, and 75 cents per switch for the E through G day code. But I'm desoldering all the boards, and I'm covering shipping in that, and I'm ultrasonic cleaning all of the switches if uh, if if the guys wanted them. So when you take all that into consideration, I'm probably losing money on this. But but more than anything else, I'm you know getting also at the same time some some West Germans, and I wanted to try that for sure. I needed some West Germans for the SE, and then also the Jane when that comes in. I gotta be honest, I might be selling, nah, actually, I'm to the point right now in my collection where I don't own anything that I want to get rid of. Like, I don't want to get rid of my QXP, I don't want to get rid of my 910 or my Jane, obviously. I love my Alice, I couldn't even think about getting rid of that. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if I ever need to sell anything to downsize, I don't, I honestly don't know what I would sell. I've got a Q coming. Really excited to see what that turns out like. I have a feeling that that's going to be a keeper. I love what Quantric has done with the QXP, and so I have no reason to believe that the you know more premium 65% is going to be bad. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, but the problem is, you know, if I had to downsize, I think I would keep the 910 SE and the TGR Jane. But then what about Alice? You know? Can't forget about Alice. But yeah, with the Jane coming, I had to get rid of the... I had to sell the LZCLS. I mean, that's sitting in a box to the right of my desk. It's been sitting in a box. I haven't been using it. It's an absolutely beautiful board. Um, so if you guys have heard anything about LZCLS, I'll show you a picture real quick of it. LZCLS actually, when it was released, had a lot of issues with anodization. It just didn't, there were lots of people that had problems. It didn't look good. The top didn't match the bottom on a lot of instances. Mine is beautiful. The anodization on it just looks, in my opinion, absolutely incredible. There's mine. Oh, and that's awful. That's going to look bad. Sorry, guys. Yeah, but the anodization looks just absolutely incredible all the way throughout. It didn't have a single issue on it, marking-wise. Um, I'll send you a link to the gallery if anyone's interested. Yeah, no, I'd, uh, but yeah, I, I just... 
I, it was my daily driver for a long time, and now since I've got Alice and the, the 910s, and I've been using those and just running around with all of them, it's been sitting in a case to the left of my desk, and so what really got me thinking about selling it was just somebody should be enjoying this, you know? I know it sounds corny to say, but that board deserves to be on a desk and being used. And since it's not here, I gotta, I gotta move it. I can't put that thing on a shelf and just hold it forever. I mean, from the ones I've seen, the only other one that I've seen that looks nearly as good as that, I mean, Nathan Kim has got a great looking one. Um, but, but yeah, even his has a little bit of the issue where the top and bottom don't match. I mean, mine matches almost perfectly. I mean, it's, I, I don't know how I just got as lucky as I did. NZ Howard from New York was actually the original owner of the LZCLS. Um, and I mean, the only reason he sold it to me, it was his daily driver. The only reason he sold it to me is because he, uh, ended up getting a Corsa. He ended up getting one of the 360 Corsas. Yeah, I actually was in the M60 group by, but, uh, you know, an HHKB layout, obviously, but uh, I moved mine. I've moved mine before it even shipped. Um, I had spent too much money on other things, and the idea of a 60%, you know, another 60% in the HHKB layout didn't really appeal to me. I kind of have a little regret on that one. It could sound really good, Wix. It could sound really good. I mean, that thing is a tank. It's so big. It could sound really deep and thawky. I'm sure my number one regret of this year will not be having bought a unicorn. That's going to be the board of 2019. Compared to what I've been desoldering lately, this is an actual breeze. When you compare desoldering shitty stock boards and PCBs to this, oh, this is an absolute breeze. Let's hope we uh, let's hope we didn't burn any pads out. I'll catch up to chat here in just a second. I'm going to churn my way through the rest of these switches. We're almost done. We're on the bottom row here. lads the one switch that was the issue has just been desoldered the space bar is now desoldered all of this just to fix the space bar actually you know what I, that wasn't it but the space bar is desoldered now what I had just done was the left alt there was more of a space and a gap because there's that blocker from the arrow key to the to the right alt that's what it was all right, one more switch to go. All right. Let's go ahead and push this out. Yeah, this is 
start. Uh, uh, uh. I wish this was easier to clean. Uh. Okay. There it goes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that'll be interesting. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna get. I'm definitely not gonna Dremel it. The the Dremel is probably gonna be too over the top for this. Um, I think I'm just gonna hand file. I so the I got a link sent over to me that actually showed somebody doing this. Um, and so yeah, so I think we'll be fine. Turn that off. Oh, I missed a switch. Hold on, we can't turn this off yet. Yeah, you know, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna hand drill, or hand, uh, hand file this one. Ooh, a UK-78. Show me a picture of that thing. And give me the details, what'd you build it up with? I don't really want to mess this guy's plate up either. Let me see here. Try not to get any micro scratches on this. So let me ask you guys, what is the setting on a multimeter? Have you guys ever used, have you guys ever used a multimeter to uh, to test your PCB uh, pads after soldering? I know I can use this. I just I haven't. What setting do I need to put this on to? I mean, I can also I can also short the pads out with a set of tweezers and just open switch hitter to see if it works. But isn't there a way to isn't there a way to use the the multimeter to uh, to test and see if uh, the pads are good? I've seen I've seen Woden do it on stream, and so I I'm like fairly confident I could. How many of these do you think we actually need to remove? If I can get, if I can get enough movement here. Yeah, we're gonna just need to, we're gonna need to remove these switches. Yeah, I was just gonna, yeah, that's what I was gonna do. I was just gonna use switch hitter and, and bottom, and uh, short out the traces with uh, some tweezers.
Let's see here. Is Outsider watching this? He has not replied back to me. So maybe not. Oh, let me see here. Silver UK 78. Let's take a look at this. Ooh, that's cool. That is cool. <clears throat> I like that. That is a clean looking end product too. Ooh wee. Ooh wee. Let's see here. Yeah, that would be good. That would be good. That would be good. This one was being difficult a second ago. Let's see. Oh, there we go. oh shit. He's still being difficult. Deciding to jump all over the place. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> Switch top opener. Is this desoldered? Yeah, it's desoldered. <laughs> this thing just popped right off. Hold on. Let's not lose his stem and switch housing. We'll put these guys up here. <laughs> Except that doesn't happen again. We're now supporting switch top opening. I'm going to put a spring over here too so I don't lose that. How am I going to get this little boy out? Does it have... No, that pin looks fine. We'll come back to that switch later. <clears throat> Man, this one almost popped off too. Yeah, there we go. That's the move right there, smart. Yeah, any of the ones that had the little spots on the plate for them. To have more than one switch, give me issues. He's like out on the middle post. Come on, left side, get out of there. Get out of the left side. Come on. There we go. Now we're cooking. To switch back together. CR die subs, that's sweet. <clears throat> hey Max, so while you're here on stream, I actually have a question for you. Are you gonna are you gonna do any more rounds of the vintage black group buys? I would love to get another set of those wise blacks. I 
can't remember if it was school or work that had you pausing for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I know. I remember you were saying you were busy with real life. I had to put it on hold, which I completely understand. Is this switch holding on to? I can see everything. <clears throat> okay, sweet dude. Yeah, definitely hit me up. Remember, I told you when you first said you were thinking about offering that, I told you it's a thankless service. It's like, uh, it's kind of similar to like switch lubing, you know? People start off that service and then they end up stopping because it's just a shit ton of work and what are we listening to? Oh, yeah. Google Radio got a little uh, carried away. Yeah. Yep. Trust me, I understand. <laughs> Those are those are not easy PCBs to desolder. Leadless solder sucks. Yeah. Yeah, you probably could have for sure. Oh, hold on one second. Change the battery out of my camera. Uh, for Alice, you need one, two, three, four if you're doing split backspace, five if you're doing a 2U backspace. <clears throat> two space bars, one left shift, one enter key. And then uh, whether you're doing the 2U or single. Actually, you know what? You might need, if you want to do a right, a full right shift, I think you have, yeah, you have the option to do a full right shift as well. I have mine split with a uh, function key. So if you want a full right shift as well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six with a 2U backspace. <clears throat> um, the bottom row that I thought was best is 1.5, 1.5, what is it? 1.75, one. 2.25, 1.5, 1.5. So this part right here is the one thing you gotta decide because you can actually do a 1.25 here and a 1.75. This might be a two. That looks like a two. Yeah, that's a two. So. <clears throat> you have many options with Alice. Yeah, because you could do so Alice is, here's some things to, here's some things to note with Alice. Alice is one of the coolest 60% I've ever used. So for instance, right off the top, 
To make this symmetrical, you have what could potentially be a B key on both sides. You have win keyless, so this is actually control and alt for me. This is my Windows GUI icon. This is a function modifier. This is also a function modifier. I was rolling on a layer here with a function modifier for a little bit because when I'm typing, touch typing, I only use my right spacebar. So this key wasn't getting used. I ultimately switched this back to spacebar because when I have my right hand on the mouse, I wanted to be able to strike space with my left hand when I'm doing, especially when I'm doing coding and stuff, going back and forth and uh, different lines. But you could potentially do a function modifier there whereas then you could have all of your function keys and everything else just hitting thumb and all on your home row I mean it's it's a cool it's a cool board there's so much you can do with that it's the most versatile 60% I've ever used for sure um, and I mean naturally I would think that too also would apply if you did a split space bar on any other 60% like I mean you could do a split space bar on the 910 but you know I don't I don't think people do that as much it just doesn't look as good. <clears throat> yeah, boot mapper. Boot mapper for Alice. You know what's an awesome configurator that I just used for the first time the other the other week? The uh, Zeal 65 PCBs have got VIA configurator, which uh, has just been put out recently. Um, <clears throat> it is awesome. I hope they port, I mean, honestly, I hope he ports every QMK compatible PCB into VIA configurator. It is so cool. It's a Wilbur's product, I believe. Um, and I think it debuted on the Zeal 60 and Zeal 65 PCBs. It's just, it's intuitive to a next level. I mean, you plug it, you plug your PCB in, you open up VIA configurator. And I mean, as much shit as we give Razer and Corsair and you know, all of their, you know, product suites though, they work pretty well. This was just like that. I mean, you have your layout laid out and then you click what buttons you want to be what and then you go to your RGB and it's like all laid out. There's no individual flashing. Like every time you change a color on any element, it automatically changes and you can show like the entire range of, uh, of hex codes within it. I mean, it gave you the, it gave you the big wide open uh, color array and you could just like in a pie, you know, a pie type graph, you could just select which, you know, shade of color you wanted it was it was really cool it was really really cool that PCB is awesome all right and there we are did pretty good didn't really get any we're lucky this is a darker darker plate so any micro scratches that I might have got on here I am not even seeing so we're lucky. We did pretty good with this little boy today. Um, I'm going to turn this screen vacuum off. So I don't think we'll be needing that anymore. Now that we're done. Actually, no, you know what? I still need to... I'm going to clean it one more time, so I'm going to leave it on. So... Yeah, we're looking good here. Uh, left spacebar is either 2, 1.5 or 2.25. Correct. Yep. And so I did, I must have done, I did 2.25 and then one on the left space bar. Yes, correct. Yep, and so you should have pretty good compatibility with a 2.25. You just gotta keep in mind, if you're using 2.25 for the left space bar, you need to use a short right shift because otherwise you won't have it. Um, that's true. So, yep, that said, we're looking pretty good here. We'll know how good we're looking here in just a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and get my, uh, my tweezers and we'll open up switch hitter and, uh, and we'll take a look and see if I've shorted anything else out on this PCB. Hopefully the answer to that is no. We will find out here in just a moment. 
switch hitter. And let's go to the editor and open that up. There we go. <clears throat> All right, cross your fingers, lads. That's a good sign. LEDs in the top left are still looking solid. All right, this is gonna take a while. Let's just go down one at a time. Escape looks good. One looks good. Two, three, four, five, six. I can tell if it's registering because the RGB component in the top right starts lighting up when it registers a key touch. What's this guy? What was top right? That should have been delete. Oh no, that was delete. Is there a top left? I'll have to return to that. I'm going to move on. I think we're still good. Because the traces going to that are good. I don't think anything goes up into this top right here, right? Is anything on that? What would that have been? Oh, one second, lads. real quick. Oh, there's delete. Did that not get bound? Huh. Hold on, I want to load up boot mapper. So this top right port here, that lines up, right? That goes, yeah, there's no blocker there. That should be a key. Hold on. Let me load up. Here and here. Here. And I just want to go real quick into boot mapper and see if it's actually registering a key on that because that that would be at the end of a trace so there would be nothing there keeping no other keys would get messed up because of this and so <clears throat> let's see here we're going to here here boot mapper boot mapper client Download. Okay, toggle boot mapper. That RGB component is really blinding me. Is it boot mapper? I am at a loss here because this should be a key, right? Yeah, that should be a key. We'll come back to that one. We might have an issue here with this guy on the top right. Because it's not... Hold on, let's go back into switch it though. Okay, so there's backspace. Oh! Is backspace taking up that? No, backspace should not be. Backspace is up here. And then this boy should be delete. But delete is registering here. And then end. And then page down. And then right. Alright, now let's just go across here.
seven not working? There's six. Oh, there's seven. No, just to register it. Okay, and I got everything below that. Did I have this without anything? No, that's how you said enter. That wasn't mapped to anything. Here's my enter key. Here's enter. There we go. Top right should have been delete. But delete is functioning. It's just not functioning on the right pad that I would think it would be on. And so... Is there a way for me to, and it wasn't showing up in boot mapper. I wasn't getting anything. Oh, what happened there? There we go. So what are the odds that this one pad got jacked up? Did I even... I mean, the resistor looks fine. The diode looks fine. This looks like there's nothing wrong with it. No, look at this thing. It's this guy up in the top... Uh, in the top of the PCB here, take a look at that. It's one of the cleaner ones, in fact. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. Again, it looks pretty clean. There you go. It's this guy right here. I don't have any reason to believe from a visual inspection that that looks bad. Would you guys agree? That's what I'm wondering. That's what I'm wondering. But, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I open up Boot Mapper, that should populate, right? If I open up boot mapper in the if I do the if I do the toggle boot mapper in the boot mapper client, I should get a register key press when I short that out with it plugged in, right? Yeah, super user. You you actually would know what to do with this. All right, so I'm by no means an electrician. I have this for testing out circuits in uh, in my house for doing the like comb wiring. What is the setting on the uh, what is the setting on this guy to uh, to do PCB testing? I know it has the option. It's just a cheap little uh, multimeter that I picked up off of uh, Amazon. Do you know which one? Do you know which setting I'd use to uh, to test that? Because I think I can use I think I can use these to short out the. Uh, I mean, I think I can use these to short out the pads, right? Lower right in the speaker icon. Oh, this little boy right here. One my fingers covering up. I think that would. I think you're right. I think that would do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. Cool. 
All right, so that's what sound we're looking for. It should be, so if I touch the probes together, it gets it. Right, so that's, in, that's good. If I touch the PCB, it, that should be what I do there, right? I just uh, I just put these in each one, each in the through hole. Does it matter which one's which? Okay. So one probe on, yeah, so you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, on this guy, it's the lower, it's the lower one where the trace is. Manual focus is gonna be easier here. It's the lower guy. So one pin on the lower right pad and then one pin on the trace. Does it matter which one's which? Doesn't matter if I use red or, it doesn't matter if I use uh, red or black for this one, right? Yep, I'd say it's good. Cool. All right, so yeah, it must have just been, that's a relief. It must have just been uh, unbound, my guess. I, I must just not have actually uh, switched the key map up. I figured that would have been, so the way I had this laid out is this was backspace, and then I would have had delete, page up, page down, function, and then the arrow cluster down here. But yeah, maybe I just didn't remap that yet. So, cool, I think we're Gucci. I think we desoldered the whole thing. We don't have any pads lifted. The the uh, <clears throat> switch hitter had everything else covered pretty much. And so I'm going to guess that the uh, top right one here is actually fine. It's just uh, a matter of getting it actually mapped. So, all right, so next steps on this bad boy which I'm going to do a part two for so I can actually go and be a dad because my kid is about to wake up from her nap here soon. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to take a manual file to the bottom side of this plate so that our stabilizer wire has full movement. So, yep, rip us. We didn't check that when we were building this thing around the first time, so we had to desolder this guy's PCB, but pending we build this thing up and don't have any issues with it after filing it down the plate that is will be uh will be good to go visual inspection looks pretty good on the plate i think we're uh i think we're solid guys give you a little close up on that all pads are looking pretty good so yeah outsider my client if you're watching this dude i think we'll be uh we'll be all square and ready to go next time we uh we stream We'll get this thing built up the second time, and uh, then after that, we'll be Gucci. So, all right. Yep, gonna go ahead and clean my desoldering iron and sign off. Thanks, guys, for tuning in this evening, or uh, yeah, I guess evening now. Afternoon, for the most part, though. All right, lads, have a good one. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>